Hello, viewers. Welcome to our Leaders Talk segment. Today, I feel extremely privileged to have with us Dr. Neelam Gupta, who is the president and CEO of RO Foundation, a not for profit organization that has been instrumental in bringing a positive change in the lives of the most marginalized sections of the society. And in its two decades of working, RO has ruled out various unique and sustainable initiatives towards skill development, livelihood generation, access to basic necessities, and vast holistic rural development projects in over 18 states of India. And under Dr. Gupta's able guidance and inspiring leadership, the foundation has won many accolades and awards for its commendable contribution towards the upliftment of the most marginalized and underprivileged communities. Dr. Gupta is a visionary, a veteran social activist, and an inspiring leader who strongly believes that the CSR industry can play a catalytic role in bringing about gender equity, inclusivity in the country. And she also believes that the application of science and technology in every CSR initiative will make it more meaningful and sustainable. And she is an institution in herself. Dr. Gupta has touched and transformed the lives of million people and continues to do so with utmost devotion and understanding the smallest of nuances and needs of the changing CSR environment in the country. With that, I warmly welcome you, Dr. Gupta. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Uh, thank you so much, Ruchika. It's my pleasure and a privilege to be here uh, with the CSR Universe with you to share my thoughts, my views, my experiences uh, with you and the audience. I'm so utterly grateful for this. Our pleasure, ma'am. We look forward to the insightful interview. And But before I begin the interaction with you, Dr. Gupta, I'm also excited to share that today we also have four special guests on our show. And these are the beneficiaries of the various interventions and initiatives of the Aru Foundation. So we have with us our little friend, Muskan, all the way from New Delhi, and from the villages of Barato, Kinnansar, and Ponchong in the state of Meghalaya, we have Hukum Manor, Angelina Lathong, and Kit Balang Sumer. We really look forward to our interaction with each one of you and exploring your perspectives and experiences with Aru. And with this, my colleague, Mr. Abhishek Cha, will be supporting you. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. So Dr. Gupta, let me begin with you. Are the four thematic areas that RO focuses on? And what are the current initiatives that the organization is running under these four themes? Yeah. So RO is basically a developmental organization. And we are focusing on all the multi-sectoral uh, themes of development and we try to align our themes along with the government's thought process and national goals that governments comes up by from time to time, especially the Niti Aayog, the, which is the main planning body in India. So they give out the directives on uh, the need of the country, for example, uh, they came up with the aspirational districts, you know, where the work needs to be done. So 118 districts were identified. So we also took up our work to those districts. Uh, to, uh, you know, compensate the development gaps and uh, work there. So uh, we work in alignment with the government's uh, goals and government's uh, schemes, while uh, we also take up all the development uh, sectors, for example, education, health and sanitation, uh, skill development. Then we also take up, uh, you know, uh, agriculture, uh, national, natural resource management, environment, uh, renewable energy, so all these uh, sectors are uh, the focus of interventions in any particular area. We take them up singly. If there's a project on education in some area, which is required, we do take up only education, but we are also taking up holistic development, which includes all those sectors in particular villages in more than 200 villages. And when we take up these interventions, women uh, empowerment or focus on women remains the cross-cutting central theme across all our interventions. So women basically make the focus of our interventions, whereas the development is done all around and uh, you know in all uh, sectors.
so dr gupta uh, where does gender equality and inclusivity come within your framework in your initiatives uh, see this is the major focus gender equality inclusivity gender justice gender equity also not only equality but also equity so we focus on all aspects of gender equality and in all our interventions as i just told you you know we have a central theme women make uh, the central piece of our interventions basically and we try to bring in as many women in participation and as many women into the fold of our programs as possible because we strongly believe that when we uh, make a change through a woman or when we change a woman or when we empower a woman we are empowering two families in fact not only one True. so one thing is that you know when you when you educate a girl uh, when you look at her in future she is taking care of two families and also when you empower a girl it is more sustainable any intervention when we do with a girl or a woman we find it's more sustainable it it's, it carries forward and there is more of a seriousness in that so women uh, gender equality and inclusivity is you know uh, in fact you know the most important component of all our projects when we are looking at education we make sure that at least 50% girls are brought in if not less uh, if not more and similarly you know when we do skill development projects you will be surprised to know that majority of our projects are women oriented and women focused projects where we are also doing exclusive women uh, oriented uh, skill development and whenever there is a project which is both for men and women we try to see that there is equality and equity in the intervention and similarly when we uh, take up certain interventions uh, you know we have found that uh, if you start with women mm -hmm. it gives us better success you know they they retain themselves and then it adds value to families income men are moreover you know anyways working doing something but adding women to that economic strength helps a lot in you know taking the family out of poverty and um, further in their uh, life so women is uh, the most central piece of all our interventions so dr gupta if we look at the ground realities and i had asked this question earlier also uh, do you think the benefits of these initi initiatives and the implementation actually takes place and percolates down to the target group which is the women herself because of you know the patriarchal uh, mindset so what challenges have you faced uh, while implementing such initiatives and what do you think can be done to you know uh, remove these kind of obstacles and hindrances ma'am you are on mute ma'am you are on mute sorry uh yeah you are absolutely right ruchika i think there are umpteen challenges uh, when you are trying to bring out women and they have been there um, uh, from ages in fact you know so as to say uh, they have always suffered they have always suffered oppression subjugation and uh, because of all that you know they lack confidence they lack confidence to come out and stand on their own feet and uh, ask for themselves there is a great uh, deal of you know lack of freedom of choice so girls are not given the due choices of what they want in all this uh, scenario the patriarchal society the backwardness uh, the uh, you know mindset of people who are not uh, really willing to let the women come out so these all these are becoming big big barriers for women for example you know when uh, covid also happened mm -hmm. women were the ones who suffered the most uh, it was the girls and women uh, yes. you know that migratory population went back in the villages mm -hmm. and the girls also along with them went back so mm -hmm. uh, elder girls who uh, say uh, who were in 9 10 standard or even higher uh, studies they just could not go anywhere to study further they were sitting at home mm -hmm. and most of the families thought of marrying them off because they became a burden on them and uh, literally you know we have seen many families just taking that decision we could stop some but we could not stop some so it is the girls and women who are always you know suffering the uh, major challenges and also whenever there is a big disaster whenever there is an emergency situation they are the they become the most vulnerable so that is that is the sad part of our society but at aro we are trying to remove these barriers only you know we are trying to promote a healthy living for the girls 
and we are trying to promote the best of education for them and not only education we try to see that they retain in the system they don't drop out they complete their minimum education before getting married or before taking up a job mm. then we do take care of their health and you know health hygiene sanitation health is one of the most important aspects in a woman's life and they often do not speak for themselves right. their health is always you know it takes a back seat she keeps working working 24 by 7 a woman is working just hiding her own pain and you know issues in health uh, which is not very which is just not uh, you know good for a, a society to move on mm. and she is not able to give her best so health is another challenge for a woman and then of course the skilling the participation in economy working and then also women are doing a lot of unpaid work mm. you would as you understand you know especially in the rural societies mm. uh, they work literally uh, they do all the household chores because there is no domestic help over there they have to do everything by themselves they do child care they do uh, uh, you know parental care old people in the house they take care of them do everything in the house and then they work in the fields mm. they are mostly you know they do everything on field except running the tractor which a male counterpart will come and say that this is my job mm. i will do this rest of the things you do all the menial jobs all the drudgery a woman undergoes Mm. so this is how she is 24 by 7 working and which is not counted anywhere there is no head count for such a woman there is no role in economy for such a woman and women become only 17% in the gdp women's uh, you know contribution to gdp mm. whereas unpaid labor if you count mm. uh, they are doing everything men can work because they are there to support at the back so mm. that is the mindset that aro tries to change we are trying to bring women to the fore we are trying to give them uh, you know their recognition due recognition give them their due uh, payments whatever you know is required to uh, give them that financial strength the economic uh, uh, empowerment which is so much needed in the society so here um, uh, if i may add and if you have time we are working on a life cycle approach because we feel and we have literally known in the uh, field by soiling our hands that a woman is threatened a girl is threatened right when she enters the womb to her life complete life you know till she dies so mm -hmm. there is a threat at every stage when she is in the womb there is a fetal uh, you know uh, killing of uh, girl child mm -hmm. in the womb so that is there then when she grows up she uh, even they kill the girl child after she is born killing off infants giving her um, not her due share of food living lifestyle you know whatever is required the basic needs of girls are not met with then education when she goes to school there is a discrimination then she goes to you know higher studies there is a discrimination in science you see very few girls in you know you know that only three four women have so far won the nobel prize you know there is so much of discrimination i am not talking about india but it's global no, no. everywhere and then when she has to she gets married early she is not given her choices in studies or marriage mm -hmm. and then she goes on to have kids and you know the another kind of drudgery and another kind of exploitation starts mm -hmm. and she, throughout the life she gets a raw deal so even a woman at 80 Hmm. at times you know even she is uh, in a very very pathetic uh, state uh, people are not the sons are not taking care of her like an old baggage she's kept somewhere hmm. so we are trying to uh, work on the life cycle approach hmm. trying to intervene wherever uh, you know we can through education through awareness through health through skill development and making their lives drudgery free or you know easy to live that is how uh, our approach to gender equality and equity is can you share some projects and initiatives that you are running under this life cycle approach currently yeah yeah we are taking a holistic rural development like you know it it's called hrdp in short holistic rural development project mm -hmm. where we are taking care of the entire village population okay so we we it's it's like a village adoption program and here we take all segments of the society or the community 
into our uh, programs, which are also need-based programs. There is a thorough survey done and we, we realize and we recognize the need in the community. Here we take up the women from in on the basis of the life cycle approach where you know right from the mother paternal care mm -hmm. where we take care of the mother mm -hmm. her nutrition her needs her supplements her dietary supplements as well as her vitamin supplements or the medicinal supplements and then regular checkups and then you know taking care that the child is delivered safely she is safe in pregnancy she is maternal you know the, her motherhood is safe and delivery is safe and the child gets, uh, you know, the, the due care. If it's a girl child, we pay more attention because uh, we feel she's likely to get neglected. There may be families who want to harm the girl child. So uh, we, we kind of, you know, monitor the entire process mm -hmm. where um, we promote this education of girl child. We promote the well-being of girl child. We also bring awareness to the government schemes. Like there is a Ladley scheme which pays for the girl child their education, their net marriage, it pays. So we register them with such schemes. We register them with any other, you know, scheme which benefits the girl child. Mm -hmm. And we give them the confidence that the girl child is not a bane. It's a boon. She might take care of you when you are old. And she is no less than a boy. She can also become a doctor, a lawyer, a, a professional. Mm -hmm. And she will support the family. And we then show them role models. We have a lot of role models, the girls who we have brought out and today they are working in big companies like team leaders mm -hmm. and entire family has been taken out of poverty. And then we give them when they are uh, education, of course, we, we give them skills for livelihood skills, uh, market oriented skills. We place them into jobs uh, in, um, you know, formal sector. Then we also take care, of course, the health checkups and everything. We refer them to the uh, places where they can just regularly do their checkups. And then we make them uh, make their life easy by giving them things like smokeless chula, where they don't have to burn their eyes. Okay. Uh, we give them solar uh, powered equipment, solar powered lights and uh, pumps. Uh, we, we make uh, water available near their uh, dwellings or near their houses so that they don't have to travel miles to fetch a pail of water. And uh, then, uh, you know, uh, we try to make their life easy, meaningful and happy mm. so that, you know, the entire life cycle, as we say, it's a life cycle approach. Mm. A woman can live happily. And if we instill these things right from the beginning, then they themselves start demanding these things and they start having their freedom of choice. And we have seen girls coming out of rice, as you might be having one student yes. here. They are just from 66 to 14 years of age group. But at that stage, when we are instilling the uh, value system, the knowledge, the education, everything that uh, is instilled in the child and the child has uh, good learning outcomes, then we have seen that way as they grow up, they not only maintain their studies, they not only stay in studies and do not drop out, but they make a career, they make choices and they they are, make a good life for themselves. So, Ruchika, so if I may uh, ask a couple of questions. Uh, to yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Uh, uh, sorry for the technical glitches that I had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, having uh, you uh, is a great privilege at our platform and uh, your experience of past many years, uh, I would like to have a few understanding uh, from you. Uh, especially in the last uh, eight, 10 years, uh, we have seen uh, there have been certain government schemes which try to uh, make the women of the house, like uh, it used to have the man of the house. So now the women of the house would be in commanding position in, in terms of uh, having a, 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 a house allotted in her, in her name. Uh, many government schemes are allotted only uh, in the name of the women uh, of, of the house. So, uh, and then there are the various mudra schemes and other social uh, development projects uh, running, uh, run by the government, which targets only uh, women member of the house so that uh, they not only earn for their uh, family, but they also get the due respect and dignified place in their family uh, as an, uh, an equal partner uh, running the, uh, the household. So in your experience, uh, have you been able to uh, notice any change, in, in, especially in these rural sectors where your work is uh, uh, largely focused in the last few years uh, uh, due to the government initiatives or the you know various government or state uh, government initiatives uh, 
uh, in, in rural sectors? Um, in my experience, I think it's a good start, a very good beginning, because, uh, you know, as you have already said that uh, once women has some assets in her name, a woman has property, women has uh, wealth, or women has, uh, you know, even financial uh, empowerment, then they get a lot of due respect and oppression is much less. You know, their domestic violence is reduced drastically when a woman has a financial empowerment. So I think the thought behind this is that we should empower women. And though uh, government had given property rights to women, but most of the families we have seen even in urban uh, milieu, that they, they somehow don't give the due share to the girl or the woman. Exactly. And normally it is given to the boys. So uh, very selectively, if we are targeting girls and women, to give these benefits, I think slowly it will bring a change in the society. So far, I think um, uh, we have covered very, very little ground. You know, the schemes are there, but then they have uh, been very, very sporadic and far in between. Uh, we, uh, we have not, say, covered even 50%, which should be the ideally uh, covered uh, numbers. But we have covered, I think, Actually, one or two percent yeah. women. Yeah. So actually, maybe the, that patriarchy of our social system is not letting uh, their grip go loose because uh, so many times we have seen uh, exactly. you know, Sarpanch Pati or Sar, uh, Sarpanch Pati or, you know, exactly. they, they, uh, they make candidates, uh, they, uh, their daughters are, uh, you know, candidate in election and the uh, father actually uh, takes hold of all the work, uh, in, in, especially in panchayats and rural uh, areas. So maybe that is also yeah. one, uh, one yeah, part it of the problem. Yeah, it defies, like we have 33% reservation in panchayat so and in the system, but then it's, it just defies the whole purpose of the scheme because uh, they are still sitting in Gungat ground realities that yeah. when we go and do the meeting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they, they, they are still sitting in that parda and they are not able to utter one single word and the Pradhanpati is doing all the work mm -hmm. and all the talking. So, uh, and even when they get the house in her name, I think that doesn't give her that much respect as when she would earn that house. You know, it, it they know just like the Pradhan Pati scheme. They know that it's the uh, yeah, exactly. jo who is getting, but just namesake, a woman's name is there. Okay. So I think and, uh, we need to do a lot more in this area to give them the so, real respect. Uh, we'd be by earning. She has to earn that herself. And Ms. Sukta, my uh, other question is also of, of about the de uh, the development that we have seen in uh, in the in the last seven eight years probably, uh, and that is especially regarding those teenage girls that you are working with. Uh, the, we have seen a lot of uh, you know social media development coming into play, and you know not a single patch of the country is left uh, with this broadband connection or various of social media platforms that uh, people or that these teenagers especially are not using, Instagram, uh, you know other other social media. So. Uh, they have there has been a craze uh, you know among these teenage also teenage uh, girls and boys also to, to make followings by doing some you know other work or some unique uh, dance music or some anything that 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 could be unique my point is that while they are exploring this technology and they are getting exposed to the world of you know this this platform which has connection all across the world uh, has they also been able to uh, you know, believe the fact that they are equal. There is there, there has been discrimination with them uh, as part of being a uh, you know female gender, uh, or or how are they trying to now counter those narratives uh, that has been very very well uh, instilled in, in in them since the childhood that you are a girl and now you should not do this, you should not that. So maybe th those uh, experiences that you have seen on ground and how you can share with us. Yeah. I think uh, technology is one of the biggest unifiers. Uh, it's, it's a leveler, actually. Once you mm -hmm. have technology in hand, it doesn't see rich or poor. It doesn't see, you know, backward, forward, or it doesn't see, you know, you belong to that caste, that this caste, uh, patriarchy or nothing. The technology should be in your hand. So mm -hmm. I think going forward, technology would be the biggest game changer. No government can change as much as the technology can. Once the smartphone and the phones came, you know, it changed the entire thing, which was not pushed by the government, but by the technology. Now, everybody has a smartphone, even a rickshaw puller has a smartphone. So uh, they are all on, uh, and they, they've also become financially stronger with that. You know, the inclusivity, the financial inclusivity has also come with the, the use of technology. Everybody can now pay through digital systems. All these things have come through technology. So uh, we have ourselves used a lot of technology in our programs. 
especially during COVID when uh, the head start was made, everything was so fast paced that mm -hmm. within two years we are all into uh, technology and social media now again within the technology system, social media is a kind of real social uh, media, should I say, because a person who's sitting in a village is making a video, putting up, you have seen that West Bengal case, you know, exactly. that... Uh, uh, Channawala, that, uh, exactly. that, that that's song. That, Everyone is, uh, I mean, is I he became a star overnight. There, there was no discrimination. There was nothing. People like him. People choose him. So mm -hmm. that is how we. So, Ms. Yeah. we are like we have been told in our communication classes that uh, information is power, and uh, as we see more information uh, getting into the hands of everybody, they'll be powerful and more uh, empowered. Surely, uh, maybe Ruchka would like to intervene here and. Uh, Yes. So, uh, Dr. Gupta, as you're aware of the challenges at the ground level, what do you think are the other key intervention areas that other CSR uh, industry stakeholders like the corporates, the government can, you know, collaborate on to uh, make women empowerment, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to achieve women empowerment in its truest sense? Yeah. What I feel is, you know, a lot of CSR programs and a lot of companies are focusing on skill development for women, you know, and skill development is okay. One thing that we need to do and with education, it will come also. But there are other, uh, you know, areas like lack of basic amenities for women, hmm. which is very, very crucial uh, for any success. I'll give you my own, our own example from RO. Uh, we've got some beneficiaries also from that area, Meghalaya. We were uh, asked to do skill development in Meghalaya, you know, for the women uh, in East Khasi Hills. And we wanted to do some projects so as to make them financially stronger and economically independent. Mm -hmm. When we went there, you know, we saw that women would hardly focus on skill development. They would come for half an hour. Their mind was not there. They could not do anything. Mm -hmm. Many of them never came for the, uh, you know, uh, taking those programs. Mm -hmm. So uh, then we started uh, working why they were not joining, why they were, why there was a, such a lot of absence, absenteeism in the programs. Mm -hmm. And we then realized that they were busy fetching water throughout the day. You know, they, they didn't have water at their doorstep. And then what they would do is uh, they were living uh, in a village, which uh, the, and the stream where they fetch, fetched the water mm -hmm. was across one hill. So they would climb the hill, they would go down that hill, take water on their backs, you know, those in small pitchers, then climb back on the hill, come down to their village. One, uh, one round will take them minimum one hour. So four or five they needed at least uh, in a day to do only cooking and, uh, uh, you know, drinking. Leave alone bathing, washing. That, for that, they, the entire family would go to the uh, stream. So it was shocking for us, you know, the, a woman can't do anything else except fetching water. Mm. So then we decided to first break this barrier. First, you know, get them out of it. Mm -hmm. And we did a technical study, feasibility study, and we put up a solar pump in that area where the pump would lift water from that stream to the hilltop. And through gravity, we made the water come down to their village. And we put up one big tank in the village where they could come and collect water. Mm. And trust me, it was such a liberation the day, you know, it, it was like an independent day for day, uh, day for the women. Mm -hmm. And after that, you know, they were uh, uh, happily coming for uh, skill development and training. Their children were healthier because they were washing. They could uh, get water near their houses, you know, just do a few steps away. So this was the liberation point. This is what I feel that the companies who are taking up CSR, just not focus on, say, skilling women. They can take the skill and sit at home for yeah. something else, which is very important and crucial for the family. Most of it is, you know, water, of course, availability, access to water is one of the major things mm. which we have to do. Then the child care, you have to open creches or daycare centers for their children. They can't do anything if their children are not taken care of. Absolutely. Similarly, other support systems, you know, women, if they, you empower a woman, you need to create an entire support system for her mm -hmm. so that she can carry on the works outside her house. It has to be sustainable for her. It should be sustainable. And we have to look at her problems holistically. Yes. You can't just, you know, just for the sake of giving skills and uh, doing something that is not sustainable. And often uh, we don't get uh, good results of that. 
Dr. Gupta, uh, we would want you to speak about one of your projects called Rise Initiatives. And we have one of the beneficiaries, um, a little girl um, named Muskan over here. Muskan, you have a lot of swag on our show. Pe. और उनकी एजुकेटर सरोज जी भी साथ में आपका भी बहुत-बहुत स्वागत है सो डॉक्टर गुप्ता इफ यू कुड से अ फ्यू थ्रो सम लाइट ऑन दिस इनिशिएटिव देन यू कैन स्पीक विद मुस्कान अब सी राइज इज रेमेडियल इनोवेशन इन स्कूल एजुकेशन सो दिस राइज प्रोग्राम वी हैव बीन रनिंग फ्रॉम द से 2008 9 वेयर इट वाज कॉल्ड पढ़ो और बढ़ो अर्लियर uh, so the idea behind the program is that often you see that people, children from marginalized communities or backward communities, say slums or, uh, you know, underserved communities, they often lag behind in studies. They are not able to cope up with their, with their studies and their learning outcomes is, are not uh, up to the mark. And they, they remain behind uh, in most of the educational uh, uh, parameters. So looking at that, we felt that children needed additional support. Mm. Uh, apart from school support, you know, if you're if we support these children, they can also have better learning outcomes. And initially, when this program started, we did not have uh, RTE's right to education. At that time, children were not even going to school. Our uh, enrollment uh, was very low. Net enrollment uh, was quite low. So at that time, we were work, we started working on taking them to school at least, giving them access. So access was one of the points and retention in school. So we initially started working on access and retention mm -hmm. so that children remain in school. But when RTE uh, came, the act came, mm -hmm. then it was compulsory for children to go to school. And most of the children we see that are enrolled in school. So now mm -hmm. our job is to work on retention and learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. So then we conceptualized this program and where we identified some kids to uh, give them, uh, you know, three hours of three hours of uh, education as well as you know nurturing the childhood for three hours giving them value systems giving them extra activity and many other things so that they could they could come at par with other children who are who have uh, you know better children who are belong to uh, better uh, you know richer family yes. and uh, over these years, you know, we have, uh, I think, nurtured more than 50,000 children like that. And uh, say in the past 10 years, we have a track of those children who are now, uh, you know, almost out of school and uh, doing much better for themselves. But here we have, uh, in one year, we take about 1,000 children and uh, work with them to give them better education and... Uh, uh, to give them better education and uh, nurture them all around in their lives so that they can also uh, be good citizens. And what is the geographical reach of this project? Uh, this project has been running in a slum cluster of Sangam Bihar, which is one of the largest slums in Asia, and uh, uh, Mundka, which is a semi-urban and you know rural uh, mix of uh, population. Uh, where we found that children were really lagging behind in studies and some of the children who earlier belonged to those villages, now they are under municipal corporation, but uh, they they are far, far behind. <laughs> Families are very backward. So we took them into our fold and uh, we have educators uh, for every, you know, they, they are broken up into batches mm -hmm. because as you know, in Delhi, uh, the schools run in two shifts. So the mm -hmm. first shift is for girls and second for boys. So girls come to us in the afternoon and boys come to us in the morning when they don't go to school. Okay. And we have dedicated educators. We have centers in the slums uh, near their uh, doorstep. So we call them doorstep centers so that quickly they can come and if, they, if the child is not there, quickly the educator can you know call out for the child or one child can run and call them. So it's a very close-knit uh, system. And most of the educators also belong to those communities who we have chosen, who are passionate, and we give them in-service training. Okay. And we uh, run, uh, you know, very thorough project-based uh, modules with them, learning modules. It's a blended learning okay. uh, for them. And uh, the, their fundamentals are made so clear that once we they go through, run, we run them through this uh, concept and system, they generally never fail. You know, they are very quick in grasping the uh, uh, further content in their schools. 
so that is how it is being done and it brings out the overall personality of the child because they do also do a lot of extracurricular activities a lot of performances a lot of celebrations are done so their their entire personality flowers and then they are also able to realize their true potential if there is a talent we promote that talent so uh, it's a holistic uh, kind of program and you have any corporate partners uh, helping you with this yes yes we so, have a corporate partner this partner for this program we have agricultural insurance company of india okay. who has uh, been partnering with us earlier we had other partners but now uh, at currently uh, agricultural insurance company is partnering with us i think now abhishek can speak also, uh, with our dear guest uh, muskan muskan yes. apne aap ko uh, unmute kar dijiye गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून मुस्कान ना मेरा नाम अभिषेक है और मैं आप एक दो चीजें आपसे बस जानना चाहता हूँ कि आप तो जब से आरोप से जुड़ी हैं आप कब जुड़ी और कैसे जुड़ी पहले तो ये बताइए पहले तो मैं पहले मैं तो दो साल पहले यहाँ पे जुड़ी हूँ और यहाँ पे मुझे आके बहुत अच्छा लगता है अच्छा आ, अच्छा लगता है तो बताइए क्या चीजें हैं जो यहाँ पर आपको पसंद आती हैं क्योंकि तो यहाँ पे मुझे अच्छे से सिखा जाता है पहले जैसे मुझे हिंदी रीड करना इंग्लिश रीड करना नहीं आ जाता तो पहले जब फिर जब मैं यहाँ पे आई हूँ तो मुझे ये सब चीजें आती हैं और यहाँ पे तरह तरह की एक्टिविटीज होती है इसलिए मुझे यहाँ पे आना बहुत अच्छा लगता है अच्छा मुस्कान आ, 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 जब आपको यहाँ पर आके अच्छा लगता है तो आप अपने दोस्तों को भी बताती है की उन्हें यहाँ आना चाहिए और उन्हें अच्छा लगेगा हाँ मैं उन्हें बताती हूँ कि मुझे आना बहुत अच्छा लगता है और अगर आप आना चाहते हैं तो आ सकते हैं तो वो आते हैं मतलब आप, आपके कहने से कोई दोस्त है आपका जो आपके ग्रुप में शामिल हुआ हो यस सर मेरी फ्रेंड है वो यहाँ पे है अच्छा गुड गुड रुचि का हम और प्रतिभागियों से भी बात करें बिल्कुल प्लीज तो अभिषेक दुबे हैं जो एक बहुत बड़े समूह के साथ बैठे हुए हैं जी जी बिल्कुल अभिषेक कुमार दुबे जी आप अनम्यूट कर लीजिए जी अभिषेक अभिषेक आप पहले तो बताएं कि ये जो महिलाएं हैं जो हमें स्क्रीन पर दिख रही हैं ये कौन हैं ये किस तरीके की सहायता समूह से हैं या कौन से ऐसे मकसद है जिसकी वजह से आर से जुड़ी हुई है चाहेंगे जैसे ये हमारी महिलाएं हैं ये छत्तीसगढ़ आरो फाउंडेशन से है और ये मतलब इंडिया की सबसे बैकवर्ड कम्युनिटी बैगा कम्युनिटी से है अच्छा। जैसे वीमेन एम्पावरमेंट के हम लोग बात करते हैं तो उसके लिए हम लोग इनको इंटरप्राइज सेटअप से जुड़े हुए हैं जो ये सुअर पालन कर रही हैं और इनके पास दो यूनिट सुअर है जो समूह के है एक जय गंगा मैया और जय लक्ष्मी माँ और अच्छा। इनके द्वारा सुअर की पूरी ऑपरेटिंग की जाती है देखभाल करना चारा खिलाना घुमाना फिराना उसके बाद वो जैसे ग्रोथ होते हैं सुअर उसको ये लोग बेच के आपस में कंट्रीब्यूट करती हैं और सारा मैनेजमेंट ये लोग करती हैं अच्छा तो इससे इसके जो इकोनॉमिक इम्पावरमेंट है उससे आपने इनके सोशल स्टेटस में आप मेरा ख्याल है दो चार साल से इनके साथ काम कर रहे होंगे जी सर यहाँ दूसरे साल एक साल पहले काम हो चुका है नेक्स्ट सेकेंड ईयर ये है तो आपको जब ये थोड़ा पैसा इनके हाथ में आया है थोड़ा इनकी एक्टिविटी बढ़ी है थोड़ा ये आउट ऑफ द वे चीजें कर रही हैं जो ट्रेडिशनली करती थी तो आपके इन, आपको इनके सोशल स्टेटस में कोई फर्क दिखा है और दूसरी बात कि वो जो पैसा इनको मिलता है वो पैसा किस मद में ही सबसे ज्यादा खर्च करती है सर जैसे अभी करेंटली में इन्होंने होली के समय आया हुआ था तो सभी महिलाएं आपस में तय करके और जो भी सुअर हैं उनको बेचे बेचने के बाद एक सुअर का वजन 53 थ्री के के हिसाब से गया तो उनको दस हजार छह सौ रुपये का एक सुअर का मिला ऐसे ये करके तीन हाँ तीन सुअर इन्होंने बेचा और आपस में तीन तीन हजार रुपया कंट्रीब्यूशन कर लिया दस लोग मिलके इसके बाद इन्होंने इन्होंने होली के पर्पज में अपने जो घरेलू खा खर्चे होते हैं तो उसके लिए काफी यूज किया बाकी बच्चों के जो स्कूल फीस होते हैं उसके लिए इन्होंने यूज किया और भी डिफरेंट एक्टिविटी में ये पैसे खर्च किए मतलब जो भी इनका पैसा आता है वो घर में ही जाता है ये अपने पे कम खर्च खर्च करती है खुद पे कम खर्च करती हैं। बिल्कुल और सर जैसे ये अपने इंटरप्राइजेस को और आगे बढ़ाने के लिए चार छोटे बच्चे भी खरीदने वाले हैं जो अपने समूह में इनमें आउटलेट में डालेंगे और इसके बाद उसको सर्व करेंगे ताकि आगे बड़ा हो जाए फिर इसको सेल आउट करेंगे अच्छा अभिषेक आपके साथ कोई महिला है जो हमसे बात कर सकती है या बात करना चाहती है जी सर हम बात कराएंगे 
हेलो नमस्ते सर नमस्ते दीदी आप ये बताओ कि आप जब से दीदी के साथ जुड़ी हैं आरोह के साथ जुड़ी हैं उसके बाद आपको क्या क्या अलग हुआ आपकी जिंदगी में आपने क्या क्या अलग किया है अच्छा तो पैसा आपको मिलता है तो पैसे का क्या करती हो सब घर में खर्चा बच्चे उच्चे पढ़ने लिखने जाते सब चीज देते हैं सर बांट लेते हैं आपस में बचत ला खर्चा दिखान बार तुम्हार बार चारा उरा रख हाँ सुई पानी तबियत ठीक नहीं रहा सुई पानी लगवा था सर अच्छा शुक्रिया शुक्रिया अभिषेक जी अभिषेक आप और कुछ अगर ऐड करना चाहते हो जी सर इनका बस यही कहना था जैसे पहले मैं बोला कि काफी अच्छा इनिशिएटिव ये लोग रोल लेके अपने इसको इंटरप्राइजेस को डेवलप भी कर रही हैं और आगे फर्दर भी ये लोग नए यूनिट के भी बात से सोच रखी हैं कि बाकी जो इनके साथ महिलाएं हैं इस गांव के उनको भी ये लोग अगले यूनिट ओपन करेंगी और उनको अपने पास से बच्चे के रूप में सपोर्ट करेंगी और इसको एक बड़े लेवल पर लेके जाएंगी अच्छा धन्यवाद बात करने के लिए हम एक और पार्टिसिपेंट के पास जा सकते हैं हुकुम मैनर अगर वो हमारी बात अगर वो हमारी बात सुन रही हूँ हुकुम so uh, abhishek before that i would want uh, dr gupta to uh, elaborate on the initiative with which uh, hukumanand is associated dr gupta yes, please. could you please elaborate yeah. on the same uh, i think i let sonakshi take that because yes. uh, sonakshi or shilpa shilpa you can explain uh, if you are there look uh, i think uh, mr bhavani shankar naik would take over bhavani aap please explain kare What is the intervention and oh. in about uh, Hukum Manor? पहले तो आप अपने बात में बताइए आप introduction दीजिए अपना और अगर आप camera on कर सकते हैं तो बहुत अच्छा होगा। जी मैम। Thank you। So good afternoon everyone. So uh, I am the project coordinator of West Jhanpur Hills. पंद्रह गांव में काम करते हैं, जिसमें से एक गांव है बरातो और Hukum is from बरातो तो बारह तो में हमने एक हैंडीक्राफ्ट सेंटर एस्टेब्लिश किया था और वहाँ पे हमने 15 निडिल वुमेन जो हैं उनको ट्रेनिंग दिया था और ट्रेनिंग के बाद हम उनका सस्टेनेबिलिटी के लिए उनको मार्केट लिंकेज भी करा रहे हैं तो हुकुम आपको वो सेंटर पे अभी है हुकुम तो आपको दिखाएंगे कि कैसे हमारे बेनिफिशरीज काम करते हैं क्या प्रोडक्ट करते हैं और उनको क्या चेंज हुआ है आफ्टर आर ओज इंटरवेंशन उनकी लाइफ में क्या चेंज हुआ है वो हुकुम आपको बताएंगे सो हुकुम यस सो ओवर टू यू सो प्लीज शोकेस आवर सेंटर एंड द प्रोडक्ट्स एंड प्लीज एक्सप्लेन दैट व्हाट चेंज हैव यू ऑल गॉट आफ्टर आर ओ केम टू योर लाइफ सो मैं देख सकते हैं कि ये हमारे बेनिफिशरीज हैं जो कि बैम्बू और केन से ये सब प्रोडक्ट बनाते हैं और प्लास्टिक का भी मटेरियल हम हम इस पे ध्यान देते हैं तो ये कम्प्लीटली वुमेन सेंट्रिक सेंटर है ओके सो भवानी जी हाउ मेनी बेनिफिशियरीज डू वी हैव अंडर दिस इनिशिएटिव एंड इफ वी कैन आल्सो हियर इट फ्रॉम हुकुम जी व्हाट हैज बीन योर एक्सपीरियंस ओके अभी तो 15 बेनिफिशियरीज हैं ओके हुकुम सर नॉट पुट ऑन फ्रंट कैमरा yes sir yeah um, all of us want to know that um, how um, this handicraft center has improved your life okay and uh, what benefit have you got from this project and intervention so everyone wants to know from you so please you uh, give your presentation right mm, okay sir <clears throat> good afternoon sir and good afternoon ma'am Uh, I am Hukum Bhatmai Mana from Barato Handicraft Centers of West Jhanpur Hill District from Meghalaya. So uh, I myself have studied till twelfth and could not um, 
protest continues due to financial problems and big family, three sisters and two brothers. So in our village, this training center has been established by the Arok Foundation and the Focus Rural Development Program of HDFC Parivartans. There are 15 members in the centers who make uh, handicraft items from bamboo and canes. Uh, here in our village, we have lots of uh, problems, uh, mostly education and livelihoods. Uh, many of these women are home markers or old ones who wanted to support their family income or have financial uh, independence. So after our foundation teams visited our village, a handicraft center was established and 50 needed women were raised free of course for two months. Our foundation also helped us to form our own government, uh, recognized handicraft corporate society. Now we are making handicraft uh, item and selling in local market. We are getting a uh, good monthly income at around 1500 pairs artisans. Also, we have applies for artisans cut from development commissioner handicraft by the initiative of our foundation. Uh, they have always been asked even after completion of trainings, they got us on marketing and selling of products. They have linked us with some buyers who have orders, uh, who give orders for items. So, have assured that us that we will arrange for refreshes training in next month to mm -hmm. create our skills so that we can design our own products and make them more beautiful, which will be more demanded. So definitely we are delighted with, the, with this interventions and feeling happy to add uh, to our family income. We are all thankful uh, to HDFC, Bank, Parivartans and other foundations. With our uh, home, we will not have got skills or enhance our financial levels. That all, that's all, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Abhishek, do you have any questions for her? Uh, I think uh, I would like to have one question that ever since she has started her work, uh, what sort of changes do you see? Uh, again, uh, it is mostly related to the financial uh, implication. Uh, those financial uh, empowerment that the women might have had, uh, did it actually impact their social status? The training that you're imparting to these women, how are that making a difference to their life? Uh, first, first trainings, all the benefits, all 15 benefits to this, they cannot, how to make, uh, how to make strap, how to make um, coins and basket also. So after our foundation team visited in our village to form the handicraft centers, all the 15 beneficiaries, they right now, we, we know how to, we know how to make the corn and the basket, the mats also, and the uh, mura in our village, we call mura, the sitting stools. Okay. That's all. Where do you sell these products? Where do in, you sell these? Sell the products. Near, yeah. near the village. Okay. So it's like all consumed in Meghalaya or do you also it's send it across the various... Local market. Yeah. We are selling in local market. So are you planning to use digital media, online selling platform also and sell it across the country? And how is RO helping uh, you do that? Dr. Gupta, maybe you can uh, elaborate on that. Yeah. So RO has been actually working on the sustainability. As I told you earlier, you know, skilling is not enough. Traditionally also, they have been doing a lot of handicraft work with bamboo and cane. But uh, the problem is, you know, uh, of sustainability, of marketability of those products and finding regular market for those products so that their sales and their work remains throughout the year or, you know, for a longer period. So what we work is on the, firstly, the uh, designing, product designing to make them more contemporary and to make them more appealing to the mm. market. So we have done workshops with them so that their products can be, uh, you know, uh, of better quality and better design as she's also telling that we're also now doing a refresher training. So we keep getting, uh, you know, highly acclaimed artisans to teach them uh, better skills and to teach them more uh, finishing and better designing quality wise. 
Then second is bringing them marketability. Here we have also uh, made a federation of these women because there are a lot of benefits from the government. They can take loan, they can take loan for the uh, raw material and all. And as a, uh, as a federation, they can also participate in hearts and uh, fairs and melas, uh, which, which then becomes more cost effective. Mm-hmm. So we made a federation. We have also registered <laughs> them as individual artisans with DC handicrafts. Oh. So that, yeah, if there is a Bela like Suraj Kord or anywhere, you know, Pan India, right, uh, yeah. uh, then they don't have to pay for that uh, stall mm-hmm. and they get facilitation. They also get many awards. So this is another thing. Now we then work for their marketing, uh, marketability and we try to give them opportunities. We try to give them access to the markets. We find the markets where they can, you know, take their products mm-hmm. and we try to make a supply chain for the entire uh, group so mm. that regular supplies can be ensured. Uh, we have also bought a retail, uh, made a retail outlet uh, near Ch- on Cherapunji Road, which was through ROs effort and government allotted a site for making a retail outlet on the highway. Mm. And uh, their products can also be kept in that retail outlet now, which is uh, going to have a lot of footfall. So uh, we make all out efforts for basically, you know, uh, to find markets for their products, which then, you know, once the money starts coming in and regular income is there, then obviously the skills will be more meaningful and more yes, economically absolutely. viable. Absolutely. So that and it will give them motivation to continue. Mm-hmm. If they don't get any returns, you know, they, they, they lose the motivation and then they relapse and sit back mm. at home. The whole effort gets wasted. So we make all out efforts to, uh, you know, make make this entire supply chain viable. Okay, so thank you so yeah. much. Can we have uh, Angelina Lathong and Kid Balang Sumit quickly sharing their experiences also with us? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am and sir and everyone who's a participant here. I am Angelina Lathong from Kansar village of West India Hill from Mekhalaya. I represent the Prashang Hanlum Cooperative Society. We established by Aro Foundation under Focus Rural Development Program. So here we have already finished the training three months. So there are, before we have uh, very difficult in financial family. Mm-hmm. And now it's a little different from before. So here, most of, uh, most of us farmer. Mm-hmm. So after this uh, Hanlum Kim in our village, mm-hmm. we have experienced a lot of how to stitch the plot, make the muffler, the well, now we know how to make this. So we are very thankful to our, our foundation who give us a who give us a chance to train and to know how to make the cloth. Before we used to earn only about uh, three thousand and four thousand. So now the income is increased. Mm-hmm. From the from the we have this training in our village. Mm-hmm. So I'm thankful for the I'm thankful to sir who give us a chance to be a better in the future. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful hearing from you. Uh, mm-hmm. and so many, uh, can we have you as well? Ma'am, yes. ma'am, I just I would just like to interrupt. Yes. Um, uh, Angelina, uh, could you please yes, uh, show, show us the handloom center? Please do that. Yes, sir. Just show us the looms and how you work on the looms. Yeah, uh, ma'am, and some uh, beneficiaries are already working on it. Angelina, yeah. just show it. Mm, you can see. So, uh, can you rotate your phone once again because you're in 
and show the products also the products that you have made this is my floor we have made shawl towel so this is how so being sold uh, across the country or in just local markets right now and any planning to sell it across the country in the future um uh, yeah, uh, trying to make the export tie ups for them trying to sell it across the country and uh, also even export it and for uh, handloom which uh, corporate partners are uh, who are supporting hdfc bank yes in the bank the primary hdfc yeah so uh, that's commendable work that uh, dr gupta your foundation is doing hats off to you so much you really helping women in the truest sense and uh, thank you so have... much we are just trying it's just to drop in the ocean i think lots lots need to be done but boon se banta sagar mein yes and what i what i tell these women no you are the sagar in this boon you know you are the ocean or drop, ocean in the drop so let us presume that way let Absolutely. us have the ocean in the drop right so about yeah so we also have kid balang sumer ji uh, i i would want him to speak about his experience as well uh, okay uh, kid balang yes sir so please share your experience with uh, bee keeping intervention so you have been doing for a uh, couple of months so please share your experience with all of us huh? okay over to you good morning uh, good evening everyone my name is kid bhalang sumer i'm from khanshnong village west in kya hill uh, hi i'm very i'm very thank- thankful to the foundation for provided me two boxes of b box from from this b box i i have i earned some source of income for my for my family i hope that in the coming months or in coming months I will get more honey bee, and I will sell. I, I will sell it. Sell it to the to the market or to to the market or to the village, and I'll get some. I'll earn some in, source of income. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's all. I don't have many words. Can you show your. Can you show your boxes, bee boxes, if they are near you? Yes, 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 ma'am. I I would like to show the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. how to uh back camera on huh? okay 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 why not this is the b boxes yeah is is this is the b boxes let's put it on spotlight okay slowly just hold it okay put him on spotlight please okay okay just yeah. it's all the starting looking honey Oh, there are bees in there. Yeah. Bees. Yeah. I think uh, in a few months I can get collect the honey honey bee from it from this box. Mm-hmm. Kid Balang, Nilam Ma'am is there. Do you want to uh, say something to Nilam Ma'am? Yes, sir. I I don't ha- I don't have so so much word to say. Only to thanks them for provided me this box and the bee also, and they give. and for the foundation to give us a try in training because before we are we are raising the bee only in yeah, that's what what called um traditional time traditional time mm-hmm. right but uh, when after the after working with uh, after they they were give us a try in training the foundation give us training we know now how to raise the bee in this in this different different style we call different style and we can get more honey from this from this style not like mm-hmm. doing we are reading only in traditional type okay okay so you have more modern and innovative ways now to extract the honey all right that's great that's wonderful dr gupta i can see you're doing you know a uh, work across the spectrum and some amazing work we are seeing and it's really really heartening to see these people come up and talk about and share their experiences all thanks to you and your organization and uh, so they have already been traditionally some of them do their bees you know do beekeeping 
but the methods are not scientific and they do not get much production from those methods absolutely so we are trying to add scientific knowledge yes uh, to their uh, system so that they can always you know add value to for getting a little more income a little more support to their uh, you know household and they can uh, do better economically it's That's really what to see yeah. that uh, the organization is focusing on the market demands the need of the hour and then you know creating employment opportunities which are going to be sustainable for them in the future right right with that dr gupta i'd like to wrap up the interview thank you so much for your time it was an insightful and wonderful interview thank you everyone for your time and for joining us thank, thank you so much ruchika and abhishek and on behalf of aro foundation also and the entire aro family i would like to thank you that you have brought this out and a lot of people i am sure thousands or lakhs of people would be seeing that and of, of course you know this message will be taken across absolutely and, uh, i hope people will learn from it as well as share it and uh, maybe more people would be able to learn it's absolutely yeah. it's absolute honor to have you here thank, thank you so much, much.